Welcome back. So Monday afternoon I picked up the shaft as you can see here and it's looking all nice and chromed and uh, before I took delivery of it I checked to make sure that everything was fitting on there as it should and uh, just to sort of show you here before I start you know doing the rest of the test fitting and everything um, this is one of those small bearings that holds the oil collar and that's designed to just be a slip fit on there and as you can see that fits nicely and there's you know very little movement on there it's basically supposed to just slide on and same with the other bearings as well the main um, tapered roller bearings I checked those and made sure that they fit and there's the oil collar and this is supposed to have about a tooth hour clearance on there and when I put that on there um, it actually jiggles around just a little bit and that's kind of what I want and you can, you can probably hear that um, jiggling around so that way when it's sitting on the bearings it won't be touching that um, shaft there at all have that tooth hour clearance that we're looking for and one of the things I had to do was um, this little stake washer the little tabs there that notch into the slots in the side of the shaft there um, the original shaft had wider slots for some reason I weren't, it wasn't machined right so when I recreated that stake washer I created it with the, the wider tabs uh, but now the new one has the right dimensions on the slot so I had to take the file and just make some little mods to that just to take it down a little bit on those tabs but as you can see now uh, it's fitting on there nice and snug and you don't want any sort of rotational movement in there at all you just want it to sit down on there nice and snug and and uh, that way it'll lock the nut in place and there won't be any sort of rotational movement um, at all and the reason why I was filing it on the door frame there is because that's where the breeze was it's been um, just really hot in the hangar uh, this week so far it was probably over 100 degrees in there today and so um, this is again still on Monday afternoon there I put this out in the sun and on the asphalt there to warm it up and it got pretty hot fairly quickly and I also had the bearings those narrow bearings I had them in the freezer and they just have the little freezer so the idea was just going to quickly drop that in there just wipe the moisture off there or the condensation off there quickly drop it in there and hope that it would sit in there and it was half successful it went about halfway in and uh, so then I had to go and uh, um, just use a wood block there and just tap it in the rest of the way so you can see it was sort of sort of going in but it just you know, the temperature difference just wasn't enough to make it go in all the way uh, but anyway not a big deal and just with a, a 2 by 4 there just managed to just you know tap it in there gently and it didn't take much to get it to go all the way in there as you can see so it's uh, fit, fitting nicely in there just as it's supposed to and that's supposed to be a press fit that one and so here's the other side doing the same thing again and trying to see if I can make it work and <laughs> get that out of there real quick and uh, wipe it off and then uh, drop it in and that one went a little bit further in than the other one but just not fast enough and the I don't think the um, collar was hot enough and the bearing wasn't cold enough but anyway it is what it is it didn't take much you know to to put it in with the um, with the two by four there as you'll see here how I did it and it was it was already fairly straight in there so just a couple of little taps and stuff and it uh, went in there without too many problems so just wanted to go through everything with this uh, redrive and just very carefully and meticulously uh, assemble or test fit and assemble everything and make sure that I didn't you know do anything wrong or have any problems that I'd have to undo anything because like if I had to pull that those bearings out of there that would be really I don't think I'd be able to do that uh, anyway so now that the bearings are on there slide that on there and just uh, see how that fits and see if there's any any resistance there that um, it's fitting on there nicely and there's no like you can't feel any resistance there you can actually see how the holes line up there for uh, where the feed goes in and then it goes through that hole into the center of the prop shaft in order to you know send the oil down to uh, the prop itself uh, but that was fitting nicely on there so um, next thing to do was uh, test fit it inside of the housing itself and make sure uh, that it was all going to fit nicely so one of the things I had to do as well was uh, these bevel washers 
I needed to figure out what combination of those needed to be used in order to provide just enough um, you know, pressure against the bearing to stop the inner race from uh, rotating. So I'm putting you know, the bearings like that or the, the, um, you know, the bevel washers just like that and a couple of stacks like that and then a couple more flat and, and uh, you know, just to make sure it fit right. So the, the assembly process is take the oil shuttle, put that in first and that's in the front side there. Uh, that's the only way you can get it in there because the um, the outside race there for the small bearing at the back stops it from dropping out the other side. And here I've gone and taken the um, the feed line and the return lines and just sort of screwed them in to there to make sure that you know when I put the shaft in there for the test fit that there's still some movement um, with that oil collar. I want it to be able to like move up and down and also sideways so you know if there is any movement in the shaft it will happen and then you can see there the bearings on the inside there the, the main big bearing again just test fit right now and you can see there's a little bit of movement there sideways uh, but everything's rotating nicely there and I don't have the small bearing in the other side yet just basically trying this all out just to make sure it's all fitting right and this one here where this feed is there I need to clear that uh, thread out a little bit more still just wanted to test everything and just make sure uh, there was some sideways movement and that's what I was looking for and also too on the, the the holes for the return ones I needed to clear those out a little bit more just on the top and the bottom um, so again you know it wasn't going to be resting hard up against the outside casing so but overall uh, you know when I drilled those holes from before because I just did them by hand they lined up fairly nicely they just needed to be a little bit larger on the top and the bottom so there you can see how there's some movement in there and that's what I'm looking for and on the back side there and you can see how it's supposed to jiggle around that's basically exactly what I'm looking for so I'm looking from a different angle here you can see it not only does it rotate it also moves up and down and it won't do that once I've got the bevel washers in there and they're pressing down on that that will stop the the um, forward and aft movement but the rotational movement will still be there until I put that rubber hose thing around the feed line so there you can see how in the top there I want to clear a little bit more of the housing there just to allow a little bit more room and I did the same thing on the bottom one so I test fit all this and this is still you know Monday afternoon where I'm doing all this and then I figured out you know what my combination um, of those bevel washers was going to be and as you see they want to pull up on that you can see it's not moving the bearing there at all so there's some room in there right now and, I'm, and I measured it to see where the bearing is actually sitting and you see when I put on this I think it's point, uh, point 0.1 now I can't read it on the screen but anyway point 0.13 something or other uh, anyway, so what it meant is I needed to put in um, put in some more of those bevel washers in order to just have it just enough so it started to lift the um, that small bearing up, and then when I tighten it down with the stake nut, it'll put some pressure on those bevel washers. Uh, but at the same time, the um, the bearing will just go where it's supposed to be and seat nicely against its uh, outer race. So here I'm taking it out and then just dropping an extra bearing or sorry extra bevel washer in there and you see what when I drop that in just sitting on top of the other ones existing there and then I put the bearing back in and measure how much it's sitting out there and I believe it ended up sitting out about 60 thou so that means uh, you know when I go and tighten it up it will be basically preloading at um, 60 thou and that's just enough to um, you know to put enough pressure on the inside race and there you can see when I push down on that I get to, I don't know what it is one you know one one zero and it was one zero three before so um, it's about I think it was about 60 thou 60 to 90 thou either way it's just enough so you don't want to put the the um, steak nut on there it puts enough pressure on there but it's not stopping the the small uh, roller bearing from touching the housing
So now we're on to Tuesday today and uh, I'm just in the process of assembling everything now because I've test fitted it all and I know it's all going to fit and work so I uh, cleaned everything up, cleaned all the bearings up and and uh, you know the job was to basically go through lubricate what needed to be lubricated put a little bit of oil and grease and here I'm taking one of the bearings here or the, this is the large bearing and uh, putting you know grease all through it and you know I'm only showing a little bit on the video here but I actually you know spent quite a bit of time making sure that I got grease all the way through that and pushed in through every little nook and cranny in there you know just the same way as I did it last time and well a couple other times before so you know and every time I pulled it apart there's been plenty of grease still in there so I'm happy with uh, how I've actually been managed to do this each time and this grease is designed for electric motors it's a mobile grease and uh, as I said it's what I used before and it seems to do a pretty good job and stick around but you know ultimately if the grease doesn't work out in the long term um, it wouldn't be that difficult to have the whole redrive running in an oil bath um, it would just be you know similar to what I had before with the uh, the other redrive that had the journal bearings in there just be basically running an oil feed into it uh, anyway moving on the next thing here is now that I got that bearing uh, all greased up is to drop it into place and also put some grease on the inside of the outer race that it sits inside and so I drop that in there and the oil collar is already in there because that you know that has to go in first and that's still able to move around in there and so here the next thing is to put the uh, the oil seal uh, that matches up to the outside flange of the of the prop shaft put that in I tried to doing the same thing putting that in the freezer and that was actually in there overnight and it, you know it's, that's designed to be a press fit as well so I just use a little block there and got that put in and then that also has this uh, this um, retaining ring that drops in there or slides in there there's a slot that's cut into the housing for that to live in so you got to get it pressed in just enough so you can get that uh, the retaining cl clip ring or whatever you want to call it there to fit into the slot uh, but you know, there's no way that that thing's ever going to come out because it's pressed in so uh, I think when Mark did the design for this I think that ring was a little bit overkill but you know I've got it and so I may as well just use it so I got that snapped in there and then the the next thing to do is to uh, put this over the prop shaft so and uh, you know then start working from the other side so that's how it is and I put that bit of paper there so when I was tapping on it because um, there was little bits of dust and whatever chips of glass or whatever coming off that little block that I used so I pulled it out and cleaned everything up there so there's no excess grease on where the um, where the prop shaft's going to go in there and here what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of grease on the inside of that um, of the oil seal there just to lubricate that again against that big sort of flange there that you can see on the prop shaft there not the one that, it, that the prop bolts to but the other uh, big ring that's around there that's that's where this this uh, oil seal mates up to that and that was part of the original design so here I'm just wiping off again any excess grease that's on the inside of the bearing and then I flip it over and then it sits down over the prop shaft and as that goes in the prop shaft is also sliding through the oil collar and uh, just carefully so get that to sit down on there going through the oil collar and then it's sitting on the bearing and then ultimately the last little bit it just drops down in there around that the oil seal that was pressed in there so that's the fit and there's my combination now of those bevel washers so I think I just had two facing each other then a couple more sitting um, against each other and that was the best fitment to have them in there so I just dropped all those in and then the next thing to do was to grease up the small tapered roller bearing so I got that all sorted out and dropped that in there as well and then the next step was to put the, the there's a little sleeve thing that I put on there another washer and then there's the stake washer and then the stake nut and so I got that on there and bent up and then the last thing to do is put the cover on the back and and safety wire that on so 
that's fully assembled now and uh, ready to be mounted and here I'm in the process of getting it mounted and I've gone and put both of those tubes in there I actually had to run and get a shorter uh, one of those nipples there because the two the ones I had were just a little bit too long so I ran and got a shorter one so I got one that's one and a half and the other one two inches long and so here I got it all mounted and bolted up and you know it looks like it took no time at all but this is you know taken the whole day all this stuff that you've seen now so there's the the return lines in there um, basically connected up to those uh, returns from the shuttle and the feed line was ready as well so the next thing I had to do was create um, those lines well I actually already had this one so I connected that back up to the governor and then you see I've got the gauge there that I'm going to put my camera in front of so I can watch that remotely when I'm in the cabin and then that feed goes into the top there through the oil feed and uh, yeah that's all been put in there and I also I also sort of primed that with some oil through there as well made sure it was coming through the prop shaft and there's my return and I shortened that line that I told you I was going to do um, a couple of videos ago shorten that one as well and I've got that connected up to the return to the sump so pretty much everything's done there now and so I put the prop back on and uh, didn't have time at the end of the day and I was exhausted from being there all day in, in the heat so I didn't have time to run it and I didn't want to rush into it anyway so tomorrow I need to um, change the pitch on that prop back to flat and uh, just uh, do a couple of the little checks and then get it out of the hangar there and uh, run it and we'll see if the governor works and I'll probably post something on Instagram if I'm successful or not so uh, anyway, that's the update for the first half of this week. Thanks again for watching and tune in again on Saturday and see how it all turns out.